Is this the biggest scam in healthcare today? Does it actually have any health benefits or is it all just hype? After decades of being seen as the villains, the bad guys, bacteria are finally receiving the recognition they deserve. As more and more stories hit the news highlighting their supposed health benefits, we're spending more and more money on foods and supplements claiming to contain these gut-boosting bugs. These products are known as probiotics, and we're spending nearly $55 billion on them every year in the hopes of boosting our health and our happiness. But what's the science behind these probiotics and do they actually make a difference? Your body is home to trillions of microscopic tenants living rent-free. They're collectively known as your microbiome. You're basically a walking apartment complex. In fact, only 43% of the cells in your body are actually human. The rest are bacteria and other tiny creatures that live on your skin, your eyes, your mouth, but the mother load of these microbes are found in your gut. Here they help us break down foods, support our immune system, neutralize toxins, and provide essential nutrients that our own cells just can't make by themselves. And another juicy gift from our gut microbes? Farts. Yep, your farts, or most of your farts, aren't actually your own. They're made by your gut bacteria when they digest bits of food like fiber that you and I can't actually break down by ourselves. So the next time you let one rip in public, you can sincerely say it wasn't you. Secondhand farts. Cranberry fruit extract. Why would you want to have a pill of cranberry rather than just the actual thing if you wanted cranberry? I mean, this seems like some sort of dystopian future where all our foods are replaced by pills and powders. Unlike our DNA, our microbes continue to change throughout our lives in response to your diet and surroundings. And yep, our farts change too. But these changes aren't always for the better. An unhealthy microbiome has been linked to a range of different diseases, from diabetes to autism, depression, and even obesity. And we're starting to see links between specific groups of microbes and specific health conditions. For example, some species of bacteria are present in higher quantities in leaner people compared to those who are overweight. Other species, specifically lactobacillus, are associated with lower levels of bad cholesterol in the blood, which reduces your risk of heart attacks and strokes. It's not just the type of bacteria though, but the diversity. Each new species brings different skills to the table, increasing the number of tasks that can be carried out in the body and reducing the likelihood that a single, potentially harmful strain can take over. This task force isn't just helping with digestion either. A lack of microbial diversity has been linked to diseases all over the body, from allergies to heart failure and even cancer. The diversity of our gut microbes can even affect our behavior, and it's been shown that people who are more sociable tend to have a more diverse microbiome, while low diversity is associated with more stress and anxiety. Having said that, we do have a slight chicken and egg problem here. Some scientists argue that the lack of microbial diversity in these patients is a result of their specific conditions rather than the cause. But the mind-bending powers of the microbiome don't stop there. Ooh, what's this? Bee pollen? That is 15 pounds. Oh yeah. Alive. You get 300% of your D3, you get 1000% of your B12, 400% of biotin. You don't need more than 100% of these things. And actually it can be toxic if it accumulates too much. If you overdose on vitamins and micronutrients, it can cause you know, diarrhea, abdominal pain, things like that. Your gut contains more neurons than any other part of your body outside the brain. And the two organs are in constant communication via a cellular superhighway called the vagus nerve. Gut microbes are involved in the production of various neurotransmitters in the brain, which can influence our mood, memory, and our general brain function. So that raises the question, are we just meat puppets for these sentient microbes? Who's really in charge? By extension, our microbiome seem to influence the development of various mental health conditions. For example, when gut bacteria from depressed humans are put into mice, the mice begin to show depressive behaviors too. Clearly, the composition of our gut microbiomes is key to maintaining good physical and mental health. So how can we improve it? Well, this is where probiotics supposedly come in. The idea is by introducing specific strains of good bacteria into the gut, probiotic supplements improve the overall health and composition of our gut microbiomes. The big question is, do they really make a difference? 
Sort of. The most beneficial effects of probiotics have been seen in studies of groups of people with severely depleted microbiomes, like people who have just come off antibiotics. Antibiotics are a big problem for our microbiomes because they aren't selective about which bacteria they kill. They just blitz the lot of them, good and bad. With less competition from the good guys, antibiotics make it easier for the bad bacteria to seize control of the gut and start causing havoc, releasing toxins and causing intestinal inflammation, which might result in a chocolate flood of biblical proportions from your back passage. Taking probiotics seem to significantly reduce the risk of antibiotic-associated diarrhea, and there's also some evidence they might even reduce the risk of normal diarrhea too. Probiotic supplements do seem to have some effect on other digestive issues like IBS too. For most of us, the benefits of probiotics are less clear. For starters, the bacteria would have to make it through the highly acidic conditions of our stomach juices just to get to where they need to be. Your stomach can literally dissolve steel, so it's no wonder. But even if they do survive this perilous journey, they then have to compete with the trillions of bacteria that live in our guts already. And even then, a treatment that works for one person might not work for somebody else. You see, your microbiome is totally unique to you, and some people's bodies are just more reluctant to welcome new bacteria into their guts than others. One day, we might be able to tailor make probiotics that target our own personal microbial makeup, but we are still quite a long way off from this kind of customization, partly because we don't know which specific bacteria we'd want to add anyway. And while probiotic supplements are generally assumed to be safe for healthy people, they usually aren't required to undergo the same rigorous testing that most other medicines do, so you can't always be sure that they contain all the bacteria that are name dropped on the label. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Of those in here, most of which will be destroyed by your gut bacteria that live there already and your stomach acids. Uh, so this three billion might end up becoming like 3,000. If you want a cheaper option, plenty of foods contain these good probiotic bacteria too. Fermented foods like yogurt, cheese, kefir and kimchi are all full of them. And crucially, they contain many more different bacterial strains than you'd find in your average supplement. This is important because we don't know exactly which species have the biggest impact on our health. And as we've learned before, diversity is crucial. The benefits of fermented foods have been demonstrated in several small-scale studies, but it's still hard to guarantee that any of the microbes inside them will actually make it to where they need to be in the gut, and the results vary considerably from person to person. So what else can we do to improve our gut microbiomes? Well, instead of trying to recolonize our guts with a bunch of new bacteria, we can give ammunition to the good bacteria that are already there. Probiotics help do just that. Foods high in fiber that promote the growth of beneficial gut bacteria and eating more fiber has been linked to reduce stress, healthy weight loss, general gut health, and healthy skin and bones. And yet over 90% of the people in the UK aren't getting enough of it. It's recommended that you eat around 30 grams of the stuff every day. So how can we increase our fiber intake? Oats are an excellent source of prebiotic fiber as are whole grains, pulses, apples, bananas, onions, and garlic. And this is controversial, but the next time you're gobbling up a pizza, eat the crust too. It's high in fiber. And stop juicing all your fruits and veg. You're missing out on all that beautiful pulp and fiber. As well as being full of fiber, the prebiotic properties of fruit and veg don't end there. They're also packed with polyphenols colorful compounds that occur naturally in plant-based foods. Not only are these polyphenols a firm favorite for our friendly gut microbes, but they also inhibit the growth of harmful ones like E. coli and salmonella. It's kind of like, um, you know, Pokemon cards. I've got a shiny acidophilus. I think we're probably 10 years or more away from tailoring bacteria according to our gut's requirements. Remember though, at the end of the day, diversity is what's key. This is why eating a range of different fruits and vegetables is so important. You could eat the healthiest diet in the world, but if you're eating the same thing every day, your microbiome will still be vulnerable to environmental changes and take over by hostile bacterial invaders. The problem is dietary diversity has gone down a lot in recent decades, while our consumption of sugars and fats has gone up. These Moorish flavors don't do much good for our 
gut and have been shown to promote the growth of more malignant microbes like E. coli. We're also increasingly stuffing ourselves with ultra-processed foods full of emulsifiers and other chemicals that directly reduce the diversity of our gut microbes. For most of us, popping a probiotic every morning isn't going to magically transform your health overnight, although it could be worth a go if you've just come off antibiotics or suffer from IBS. And that's not to say definitively that supplementing your diet with specific microbes isn't going to have an effect on your gut microbiome either. The truth is we just don't know. If you want to try your luck, probiotic foods are a cheaper alternative to over-the-counter supplements and contain a wider range of strains as well as other healthy nutrients. So you're more likely to get something out of them. But at the end of the day, the best way to improve your gut health is to eat a colorful, complex, carb-full diet that supports the growth and diversity of the beneficial microbes that live in your gut already. Or you could just get a poop transplant.